Hello everyone, it is Sunday at time of recording and that means it's another episode of Cascapades. Today we're going to talk about the next port on this June 2022 Norwegian Fjords cruise on Carnival's beautiful Carnival Pride. This episode we're going to cover the port of Skjolden and then in the evening sailing the Sonjafjord. So Skjolden is a lovely port to be going to and I'm really excited to be joining you guys on this one. Uh, it's somewhere that I've really 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 been passionate about telling you about. It's a beautiful place and hopefully I'll give you some information today that will help you appreciate just how exciting this place can be. So we arrive into Skjolden at 8am on the Monday morning and we're there until 5pm when we leave to sail through the Sonjafjord. So let me give you some facts about Skjolden. Skjolden is known as the gateway to the parks and the reason for this is that it's got such a short distance between beautiful national parks as well as being nestled between the highest mountain in northern Europe and the largest glacier in Europe. So there's so much to see here and you can see exactly why we're docking there. It's one of the most picturesque and naturally beautiful locations in the world and it's so remote that you will honestly not believe just how beautiful and tranquil this place is. In contrast, the bustling city of Stavanger, which had 122,000 population, this place, Skjolden, has a population of 200. That is how many people live in Skjolden. So if you think about the fact that this ship has about 4,000 passengers, it's kind of crazy when the, uh, the cruise ships come into town. Um, one deck of staterooms on Carnival Pride could entirely populate Skjolden. Crazy. So uh, yeah, it's going to be beautiful, small and picturesque. The village is really close to the cruise port and tourism is obviously a huge deal here as well as farming. So most of the people here work somehow in the cruise industry, in the tourism industry shall I say, and in farming as well. So let's talk about the food options in Skjolden. As you can imagine, with it being a place of such small population, there isn't a whole lot here when it comes to service and um, shopping and things like that. But there are a couple of places I've found that will be really, really great to visit. If you're just wanting something on a budget or just something that, like a snack, because you've got amazing food on board as well, why not go to the Lustrabui Bakery? Now here is where you get the best baked goods, like the best cinnamon buns you'll ever see, and something that is common in Norway called a lefse. Lefse are sort of very um, thick rolled pancakes. Um, there's, they're closer to a bread than a pancake really, um, but they're usually filled with cream and different things like fruits. Oh, absolutely delicious. So do try some lefse if you can, and obviously the baked goods as well. Love them. Bread, oh, rye bread here is, is delicious. If you're wanting a proper meal though, there's the Eidgard Cafe. This is where you can get your local Norwegian specialties. Now in Norway, they do have big hearty meals. So everything is generally big hunk of meat, boiled potatoes and veggies. It's filling, it's hearty, and it'll keep you going because obviously it's a colder environment, a rugged environment and people generally work hard here. Interestingly with food in Norway, Norwegians tend to eat meals differently to how you and I may. They have a breakfast very early in the day which will generally be a slice of brown rye bread with some Brunost cheese which is the nutty caramel brown cheese that I've mentioned before and that will be their breakfast. Then they have an early lunch around sort of 11, 12 o'clock in the day where they will have um, just a, a small sort of sandwich, a normal sort of lunch. Then they actually have their dinner around three in the afternoon, which is very, very early for us. Um, and that will be when they have their main meal, which is their meat, their carbs, their energy. And then they would actually have a fourth meal around about the sort of late evening before bed, which would consist of something like a sandwich and a hot drink. So this uh, in mind, be aware that the food you'll get for dinner will be served quite early in the day, um, not necessarily uh, lunch menus like you might be used to in the rest of Europe. Uh, so here, the specialties you can have are salmon, uh, reindeer and meatballs as well. Uh, reindeer is very common in Norway uh, to be tried and often meatballs are made of multiple meats. You'll find them with uh, sort of reindeer, you'll have them with uh, beef, pork, 
any types of meat really, um, but they will also almost always be a mix of different meats. But they are served generally with potatoes, either boiled potatoes or mashed potatoes, and lingonberry jam. Another thing that you will be able to try is cloudberries. This is a very, very popular fruit here in Norway, and they are served on almost every um, sort of dessert option you may find. So what about sites and activities here in Skjolden? Well, as I mentioned, this is the gateway to the parks. So what are these parks and what can you do there? Well, the first is the Jostelsbreen uh, National Park, and this is where the glacier arms stretch down into the green valleys, where you can view the largest glacier in mainland Europe at close range. And you can actually get up close and have a look at this. Um, there are guides here that you can get uh, and pay to do guided walks. And you can actually walk on the actual glacier. Uh, and the great thing about this glacier is it is very blue. So it's really, really beautiful to look at and get some great photos of. But it's such an experience. It's something that you'll never be able to do anywhere else. So please do try and get to the National Park here and have a look. Um, I will post some details in the description of sort of where you can look at the pictures of this or where you can get some of the tours and hopefully you'll be able to find something that suits you and your budget. The second national park is the, jo the Jotunheimen. Uh, this is a mountainous national park. So you've got the valley and the glacier in one park and the mountains in the other. So the mountains surrounding the fjords here are perfect for short walks, hikes, climbs, and even skiing at certain times of the year. And the trails will lead you deeper and deeper into some of Norway's most fascinating natural places. So if you want to see somewhere that's untouched by people, it's not a huge tourist location full of sort of shops and gifts and all sorts of things and, uh, you know, Coke machines. This is the place to go and see what nature is really like. And one thing I would recommend, take a deep breath, smell what fresh, glacial air actually smells like. Beautiful. Now, if you're interested in history and architecture and things like that, like I am, another option is the Ernest Stave Church. So Ernest is the oldest of Norway's stave churches, and it's actually included on UNESCO's World Heritage List. So this was built around 1130 in the medieval times, and the distinct carvings on the north actually are from an even older church. So this is a beautiful place to visit. The churches of Norway are very famous. It's one thing that they are incredibly famous for, it's their churches. But this one, absolutely gorgeous, almost untouched medieval church. Go give it a visit, get some photos, and just experience what it would have been like to go to church here when you were back in the Middle Ages. Now, I would usually talk about some of the carnival excursions at this point, but as we all may be aware, they have not been listed for Skjolden yet. This may be because they are still working on the list, uh, John Heald, the brand ambassador for Carnival, recently said on his Facebook page that the Europe Shore excursions are coming um, a little bit later. They are sort of being compiled at the moment. Obviously, with things going the way they have been, the shore excursions that would normally have been offered a few years ago may no longer be available. A lot of tourism companies have obviously gone bankrupt or fallen through since the pandemic because they haven't been able to make any money. And so a lot of these tour operators may no longer be in existence. So they will be putting together um, some excursions. And as soon as we have them, I will make a video to let you know. So what are my recommendations for what you can do in Skjolden? Well, if you're somebody who just wants to have a nice little walk around, then please do so. It's a natural environment. You can have great views everywhere in Skjolden. And there is no definite definite sort of gap between light um, activity and heavy activity here because it's just down to you. If you want to uh, go, go hardcore, you can. If you want to relax, you can. But definitely try and get out to the national parks and the glaciers. If you have uh, mobility issues or you just don't want to be too active, then go at your own pace, relax, take some photos. If you're wanting to go hard, then go and do some of the hikes. Hike up the mountain, do some climbing. Do what you want to do with your day, but definitely everyone should be going to the national parks if they can. The great thing about the fjords is they're beautiful no matter where you are. And so don't feel like you have to pay a guide to take you anywhere. If you want to go on a budget, then absolutely just go off, have a little wander. We're there all day. It's only a small place. You've got plenty of time to relax and take in the sights. This isn't a Caribbean holiday. You're not going to be sat on the beach. Um, you're going to be out in nature, go explore at your own pace, enjoy it. 
So let's talk about practical tips like I did last week. So as I said before, and I'll say it every week, card is king. Um, you can use card to pay for everything. Um, here is one place that um, it may be handy to have some cash on you just in case because it is a smaller location. If the card machines go down or something, you don't want to be stuck with uh, no way to pay for anything. But uh, generally, credit card is mostly accepted. But remember, if you are paying by card, to have a passport or driving license with you, as it is essential because you will be asked at least once on your trip to provide this ID to pay. Mini bank instead of ATMs. So don't look for the ATM sign. Look for mini bank if you're wanting to draw out cash from a machine. And remember that English is widely spoken in Norway, even though Norwegian is the official language. One thing to be aware of in a place as small as Skjolden is Wi-Fi is not massively accessible. This is because with such a small population, almost every household in Skjolden has access to their own internet. So there's never been really any need to have a huge Wi-Fi infrastructure in public. There are some places you can get Wi-Fi. For example, in the visitor center, um, there is a small internet cafe. So if you absolutely do need to get Wi-Fi, that's where to go. And that is available near the port. Also in the visitor center, it's a small supermarket and a cafe. Um, so for shopping, you have one shop in Skjolden pretty much. Um, it is that smaller place. Um, it's so small, everyone shops at the same supermarket. Yeah, so one great thing for souvenirs is to go in and find something at the supermarket that is a local produce. So um, what I mean by that is maybe a chocolate bar from a local Norwegian company. Um, or why don't you try one of the local Norwegian um, drinks? For example, Coca-Cola Norway here make a very famous drink in Norway called Urge. Uh, so that's like a citrus fizzy drink, um, similar somewhat to, I would say, uh, like 7-Up. Um, go try that. And, and then you can say that you tried something that the Norwegians drink. That's pretty much all um, for Skjolden. Uh, it's a very small place, there's not much to cover. But the great part about this day is that when we leave Skjolden, we sail through the Sonja Fjord. So this is the southern fjord of the Norwegian fjords, and it is miles long. So you'll be sailing through this fjord, this narrow waterway with beautiful mountains and valleys and trees, everything on the sides of the ships. Um, and this will be for the most of the evening as we sail through. Now, do remember in June in Norway, um, there is very little darkness. They have the sun um, for about 22 to 23 hours a day um, during this time of the year. So it is incredibly light because of where the uh, where it is. Basically, it's so close to the north. And so you won't see night time on this cruise, really, uh, because it'll be light the whole time. Very, very cool. And then obviously in the winter, the reverse happens. So they have very little light and it's dark most of the time. So it's a really interesting place to be. But yes, expect that uh, the uh, after dinner, you'll come out onto deck and it will still be absolutely bright as day. Very cool and great for photos. So if you have a balcony cabin, you should definitely get some photos as we're sailing through the Sonja Fjord. If you don't have a balcony cabin, then there are plenty of decks on board the Carnival Pride where you can get good views for sail away or sailing through the fjords. Please do get some videos, get some time lapses, get lots of things. And please let me know um, what you actually get up to. I'd love to see some of your pictures after the cruise. I'd love to see some of the videos you take and I'd love to meet some of you on board. So if you do see me around, please come and say hi and um, maybe we can even compare some photos on board. Okay. I'll see you next week, guys, for some more information and we will cover some of our next ports. Until then, please do like and subscribe to the video. And if you do want to donate anything to the production of these videos, a link to my Ko-Fi is in the description below where you can donate just $3 or, or more if you wish to help me produce these videos. See you guys soon and have a wonderful week.